Ryan Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. And yes, I apologize for the first segment. It's a very, very long story. But uh, the gist of it is that uh, everything, everything, everything runs through a machine right there at my house. Everything. Mike, Dave, Filthy, Lance, Vinny and Craig, if if they're not here, byline everything. I was about to do the show, and I couldn't log into the box. Nothing was happening. All the programs were gone. It had been wiped. So anyway, uh, somehow, Admin Tony managed to uh, figure, and I, and I can't tell you how, he explained to me, the machine lost its mind. That's how he explained it. I don't know if you know this or not, but machines don't have minds. So anyway, we're going to do a little bit of uh, maintenance here, and hopefully that never happens again. But here we are, everybody. we got a lot to talk about here today. And uh, we'll do Dynamite here in a while. I guess I should get some news out of the way first. Dynamite was, I thought it was an excellent show. And uh, there's a lot I can talk about. Thankfully, there's a Brian and Vinny show tonight where Vinny and I will have 90 minutes to do Dynamite and NXT 2.0, because there's a easily 90 minutes to say about these two these two shows here. But first off, uh, COVID's all over again. If you guys thought the pandemic was over, it's not. We had, uh, let's see, we had uh, Fujita drop the title due to uh, testing positive for COVID, because in Japan, uh, the rules in this fake sport are that if you're advertised for a match, a title match, and you can't be there, you're just stripped of the title. It's not delayed. It's not so you didn't lose a title. Or maybe there's other reasons. Right, Mike? Huh? So anyway, he uh, that happened there. And then uh, Hangman Page, he could not uh, make it to Dynamite because he also uh, is suffering from COVID. And they were going to shoot an angle which would lead to the announcement of Hangman versus CM Punk. But since Hangman couldn't be there, they just announced that's the main event of the pay-per-view. And I think everybody, you know, there's nobody who watches the show for any length of time who would be surprised by that or not expect that. I mean, we've known that for a while. So Hangman was off the show. He does expect to be there uh, next week. Will Ospreay, Tatsumi Fujinami, both off this weekend's New Japan Wrestling Dontaku event due to COVID-19. As a result of PCR testing, both are off the card. It will take place May 1 at the Fukuoka Dome. As a result, mystery opponents can replace Fujinami in the opening tag match. Ishii will now challenge Hiroshi Tanahashi for the IWGP United States title. Rest of the lineup, Okada and Naito for the world title. Tanahashi Ishii is noted for the U.S. title. Desperado versus Taiji Ishimori for the junior title. Evil versus Tama Tonga for the never open weight title. The great, great Okan and uh, and Jeff Cobb. I feel like he needs something to add to this. His name as well. They will face Goto and Yoshihashi and Bad Luck Fale and Chase Owens three way for the tag team titles. Taguchi and Master Wato versus Yoshinobu Kanemaru and Duki for the junior title. Hiromu Takashi versus Yo. And uh, Shingo, Bushi, and whoever's facing, uh, replacing Fujinami against Taichi, Zack Sabre Jr. and Taichi uh, Takamichi Noku. Zack Sabre Jr. going from the main event for the IWGP heavyweight title to jerk in that curtain. Will you stop it? He is! That's just what happened. I'm appalled. I'm not celebrating it. I'm just noting. He went from the top of the mountain to, like, he's on the bus that takes you to the bottom of the mountain. So then, then you can climb. But anyway, that's the lineup there. And also, as a result of spring break, many COVID positives at my daughter Paisley's school. And then she woke up with a runny nose this morning. Oh, no. Thankfully, we can go down to QFC and there's approximately 280,000 boxes of COVID rapid tests. At the KFC? The QFC, not the KFC, oh. you idiot. Sorry. Although they might be the KFC as well. But uh, she's negative, so that's good. Good. And uh, what else do we have here? Let's get the news out of the way first, and then we'll... uh... Bo Dallas wants to return. Hear that one? He's coming back. He's been living on his farm with Liv Morgan, which begs the question, why would he want to come back? I know. Apparently he does. So uh, that's news, I guess. 
And then uh, I guess it's news to note that the former Ember Moon, now Athena, sure didn't like it in WWE. That's why she left. <laughs> Breaking news here. So uh, that's that. Yeah, and then wasn't I guess, having fun anymore is what it, a lot yeah. of it boils down to. Join the club. <laughs> By the way, you know how much heat I got over the last 48 hours or so for having the absolute temerity to like Raw and not think that NXT 2.0 this week was terrible? People think I make up this this criticism or they're like, oh, he's always listening to the chat or he's... Bi-. Bro, no. I mean, it's everywhere. It's on the board. It's on Twitter. It's I was bombarded. People so angry that I would have the temerity to say that Raw was was like the best show in a long time, the best Raw, and I can't even remember how long. And there there were you know fun things here and there on NXT 2.0. Man, how dare it's you! It's like there's bro. there's levels to this, you know, with where we're at right now on the scale of Raw. It was a fine Raw. If you want to put this up against 1999 Raw, then no, maybe it wasn't. But like. I mean, come on. There have been far more offensive, worse, juxtaposed shows than we saw on Monday. And the same thing goes for Tuesday. Tuesday is just people's, what they think about NXT a lot of times is just a referendum on what they think about NXT overall. Because, again, there are, it is a wacky, goofy show, but there are some nuggets that you can pull out of there and actually say we're positive. So, you know how it goes. Let's read some of her quotes here. My last four months was just one of those moments that I wasn't having fun anymore. It started with Shotzi being gone, Shotzi being drafted. Sitting at home, I got a phone call saying, hey, we don't want you to be upset, but Shotzi just got moved to SmackDown. She is debuting with Tegan. We don't want you to be upset, but we're doing something that's going to upset you. I was like, but we're the tag team. We have merch. We're doing fun things. We had just finally gotten into our groove. She said she spoke to Triple H shortly after. He expressed that he wasn't sure what was happening. Not the only time. She also mentioned members of the writing team told her they had no idea her and Shotzi had been a team in NXT. <clears throat> yeah. I was like, hey, let me go on a losing streak. Let me get super frustrated. Let me turn. Then the first match happens, and I'm off TV for four weeks. Then Hunter disappeared. I was supposed to be getting a match with Sarai. Ended up getting a rash on my arm. Had an allergic reaction to something that they thought was something else, so they pulled me from the match. They go, you're turning in this match, but we want to make it subtle. So they kind of turned me, but they don't. Then there was a lot of confusion on what was supposed to happen. I was like, I don't know if I turned heel or not. Does this all sound familiar? (laughs) Then I'm off TV for three weeks. I have the match with Mandy, and they're like, we're finally pulling the trigger on this. I get a note that week saying, hey, in two weeks, we need you to dye your hair fire-colored again. We need you to get the red contacts. We're going back to the old Ember Moon character. This is per Vince. You're going to turn heel, and you're going to turn heel as your old character. Shot a video. She says, I get the video ready. I'm ready to show everyone after TV. And they're like, hey, we have some bad news. Vince is pulling you off TV indefinitely. I sat there and I was like, what did I do wrong? She then got emotional talking about her frustration. When you care about something, you care about this business is so much more, not just for yourself, but for everybody involved. It hurts so much more. On some level, I knew I was leaving. I'd already been gone. Brought an extra bag, kept it in the locker room so I could pack all my stuff and leave. I'd been there for like a month. She mentioned also she had a meeting. They called a meeting. Remember that women's evolution? They called a meeting about talent dressing sexier, asking them to look more like Mandy Rose. (laughs) And if you read all the quotes on that one, mm mm-hmm. Yeah, see, there's a lot of things that, uh, you know, people don't talk about because it's it's 2022. But, uh, you know, don't think this ain't the old WWE, everybody. In a lot of ways. So anyway, uh, that's uh, that's her. And, you know, I got an email yesterday. Some bloke was, I mean, I, I, he was so angry at me because I couldn't remember. And now I can remember her name, so I guess he helped. He was so angry I could not remember Sophia Cromwell's name. And he was like, well, they mention it later in the show. Oh, I'm like, bro, on. I don't care if they mention it later in the show. She's been on TV multiple times. She's never identified. Like, this ain't on me, dude. And there's this big, long email about how I'm the bad guy. And I'm just sitting here thinking, is this one of the writers? Because it sounded like one of the writers wrote me an email because he was angry. And I'm just saying, maybe you should do a better job, brother. If it's a fan, I apologize for thinking you're an incompetent writer for NXT. But, bro, the problem isn't me, dude. It ain't me. I mean, 
I can't help but notice that I sit here and I rant about stupid things on these shows, and everyone gets mad at me about it. And then this talent leaves. I say the exact same damn thing I was saying. Doesn't know if she's a baby face or a heel. Bro, I ask that question all the time. Is Legato Del Fe- are they baby faces or heels? What about, uh, you know, the mobster bloke? Is he a baby face or a heel? Because he sure damn worked as a baby face, valiantly fighting his way to the ring at the end of his match. Then Legato takes out his leg. Who's the good guy? Who's the bad guy? It's not my problem here. I'm not the problem. So get off my back, you dorks. <laughs> I have nothing to add to that. I agree 100%. You're exactly right. And, you know, their use of Chiron with a lot of things, you know, the referees. Oh, wait, I got the thing here. Hold on. Ember Moon Athena says she was extremely unhappy during her final days in NXT, where Vince wanted her to dress in, quote, fishnet booty butt cheek shorts, and they had a two-hour meeting telling girls to learn to be sexy and alter their gear to make it more revealing, similar to Mandy Rose. Get the hell out of here. Back in a moment, Observer Live. Listen, I got to make something very clear, then we'll get into dynamite here, okay? I don't know if Vince McMahon used the term booty butt cheek shorts, okay? I said, quote, that was the quote from the person that wrote the email. But I will read the exact quote from Ember Moon Athena in her interview here. She says, I remember going to my, this is her direct quote. I remember going to my makeup artist and going, quote, I'm so unhappy, I'm so unhappy. And we'd have to sit through stupid meetings about how we would have to dress sexy. And I remember looking at someone else like, I cater to children. I am not about to wear a fishnet booty butt cheek shorts because we had a two-hour meeting about how to dress like Mandy Rose. That's not fair. Not everyone is going to be Mandy. Mandy is absolutely phenomenal. She's an amazing person, but not everyone is Mandy Rose. I started seeing this downslope as soon as Hunter was gone. And like for the first little bit, we didn't know why he was gone. We just knew he wasn't there. I got so angry. I remember sitting there, and I was like, I did nothing wrong. I didn't piss off Vince. So uh, this uh, booty butt cheek, as she termed the shorts, uh, this dressing sexy, all of this, this was uh, NXT 2.0. Yeah. This was after Vince was gone. This was exactly, exactly what I said when they started NXT 2.0, which is it's Vince's show now. Yeah. It's, it's, it's Kevin Dunn. And, bro, a, 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 a zebra doesn't change its stripes, whatever that stupid saying is. You guys think things have changed with a set? You guys think a 76 year old man has changed? Well, think again. And there's a lot more than that, bro. Well, look, I know we got to get to to dynamite, so yes. ever, so it doesn't matter. But it's like if if that's what you want to pull out of this and take that, and well, she didn't, you know, he didn't really say. Who cares? It's not the point. She said it. You know, she put it in her terms as far as what they want her to wear. That's not the issue. That's not the issue at all. And if that's what you want to take and try to play with, you look like an idiot doing it. Oh well, she didn't say. It doesn't matter how it was said. You know what the result is because if you watch the show, you see what it is and you see what they turned it into. Everybody's horny. There's a zillion colors. Nobody can wrestle for the most part. And they wanted to go with really young women in really revealing outfits, which is not anything new when it comes to Vince and Kevin Dunn and their mentality. So cut the crap with this and people trying to get offended about what she said in the interview or trying to take one quote out of it because you didn't read the interview, probably because you can't read. But let's move to Dynamite. Owen Hart, Qualifier, Dex, Harwood, Cash, Wheeler. They had an excellent match. I was certain the finish was going to be that uh, victory roll, sit down into the pin. They did in that Brett Owen match years and years ago. But, in fact, that's not what happened. But they did recreate that spot and a lot of other Brett Owen spots. And they had a great match. And they te- uh, they traded small package at the end. And Dex pinned him. So Dex Harwood is moving on in the tournament. This was a really good match. They they teased a little bit of dissension just for some heat, but of course they hugged, made up afterwards, they're best friends again. I thought this was an awesome opener. We had the CM Punk announcement that he will be facing Hangman Page at the pay-per-view. He very cleverly said, I can't promise I'm going to win, but I can promise that a Hangman will know he's in a fight. I'll talk more about that tonight and and maybe later if we have time. Had a Scorpio Sky Dan Lambert segment backstage talking about the ladder match later. Danielson, Moxley, Wheeler, Yuta, beat QT, Nick Camarado, and Aaron Solo. 
Hey, if you like violence, have I got the six-man group for you? It's a Blackpool Combat Club. These are not make the other team shine. You give them a couple of spots, and then you just beat the heck out of them. And uh, that's what they did, and uh, they gave the win to Yuta again. Uh, triple, triple violence should be the name of their finish, and uh, that was that. Had a, a Britt Baker, Jamie Hayter, Tony Storm segment that uh, Ruby Soho showed, showed up for. So they're all in the women's Owen Hart Cup, but I think they're probably going to be doing a tag match as well. That seems to be what was indicated here. We had a Jungle Boy Luchasaurus Christian segment where Jungle Boy is sad for losing last week, but says he doesn't want to sound like a sore loser. And Christian says, you don't sound like a sore loser. You just sound like a loser. And there's that pause so everyone can go, what the? And then he goes, but you're not a loser. You're a winner. Put that belt over your shoulder. And uh, they set up Ricky Starks and Powerhouse Hobbs, but it's coming, everybody. The secret plan. It's going to happen one of these days. <laughs> we had Wardlow and Lance Archer. Bro, I thought this match was really good. Wardlow was doing all sorts of crazy stuff with his giant. Wardlow got to play like a small luchador against his giant Lance Archer. And uh, the fans still wait for him to make his comeback. You know, they're still kind of quiet during the heat. But he made his big comeback. They had some great near falls. He he kicked out of the blackout. And then he finally hit a senton and four power bombs on this big dude. And he got the win. This was This was good. We had a Jericho Appreciation Society segment. So essentially what happened here, to cut to the chase, Eddie Kingston gets right in Jericho's face, and he's cutting this promo, and he's promising to put him in the ground. They're not allowed to touch each other during the segment, so it's just all it's all verbal. But then later, because the segment's over, like this 24-7 title, Jericho Appreciation Society jumps him in the, in the uh, parking garage. They beat the hell out of him. And then this dastardly Jericho throws a damn fireball into Eddie Kingston's face, burns his face off. We're leading to something here. I'm thinking this is going to be blood and guts. And we obviously have to have some matches leading up to that. But this was... uh, And the announcers are just disgusted, this Chris Jericho using fire. Serena D beat Akaru Shida in a uh, good match. It was a uh, Philadelphia street fight. So all the gimmicks and everything like that. And uh, D, like, she worked over her knee, put her in the cloverleaf, and tapped her out. So it looks like Serena Deeb is next in line for Thunder Rosa. And, man, I watch these Serena Deeb matches, and if this Blackpool Combat Club needs a woman, I got the woman for you. She's great. MJF Sean Spears promo, where MJF makes a call to a mystery wrestler who is bigger. He says he's smarter, stronger, and taller than Wardlow, and you can't teach that. So it looks like the former big cast, W. Morrissey, is going to be on Dynamite next week to face old Wardlow. He is taller than Moose. We had a great uh, segment with Fuego Del Sol backstage. Or actually, Fuego Del Sol's laid out. House of Black comes out. I can't explain this without revealing what happened. you got to watch it, but it's already over. They got the guy in the ring who you're supposed to think is Alex Abrahantes, and he's cutting a promo, and then Pac returns, and then out of the tunnel comes Alex Abrahantes, because the guy in the ring that you think is Alex is actually the returning Phoenix, and he runs wild, and they run off the House of Black, and they are going to have the match of a lifetime coming up at this pay-per-view here. Had the Undisputed Elite beating Dante Martin, Lee Johnson, Brock Anderson, and the Varsity Blondes. Literally, this is the closest you'll ever see to a not-great Young Bucks match because it was just six minutes of, of Undisputed Elite proving that when we work together, we actually are unbeatable. And they destroyed these guys, and then Matt and Nick put on the Undisputed Elite shirts. So for the moment, we're all on the same page, which might mean it's going to be longer for Kenny Omega to get back than we thought because they're... Uh, Undoing the dissension, at least for the moment. Uh, we'll do uh, the Rampage lineup with uh, old Fauntleroy. We might do this after the break, but I'm wondering if this... Uh, can I say the B-A-S-T word on this uh, show, Dom? Yes. Can I? 
I would. Technically, yes. You don't have to. But well, I'm going to. This little bastard, I think, was messing with the box this morning. He was trying to log into Byline on his own, and he screwed everything up. That's what I think happened. So we'll see if I let him do the Rampage spoilers. But Dynamite next week, we have got uh, Deanna Parazzo and, uh, and Mercedes Martinez. Wardlow versus the mystery opponent. The Owen Hart Foundation Cup qualifier with Jeff Hardy and Bobby Fish. And uh, that's the lineup thus far. And then this main event, Scorpio Sky and uh, Sammy Guevara. And uh, I'll talk a lot more about this tonight with Vinny. But, uh, like, I was just baffled with what they were doing with Scorpio Sky. Baffled. Like, I just could not figure out what they were thinking. And uh, the greatest thing that ever happened to him was... Sammy Guevara hooking up with Ty Conti and the fans deciding he was a miserable human being and turning on him. Because Scorpio Sky went from the heel that, like, you don't care about at all, he's not having matches, you think he's killing the title, you don't get it, and then you just lose it. Now, this guy is so over as a babyface. This this place, when that guy grabbed that belt and won the title back, I mean, they absolutely exploded. And they're in a Dan Lambert... And they are so into uh, Ty Conti and uh, um, what's her name? Oh, uh, Paige. Paige Van Zandt brawling to set up the tag match that they've been teasing for like a month and a half, two months now, which is going to be at the pay-per-view. And uh, yeah, Scorpio Sky won. It was a very good ladder match. Uh, Sammy Guevara almost killed himself because he did not listen to my rant about Sting and his dives. Instead, he did a completely impossible to catch dive and they almost both died but i think he's okay because he kept working the rest of the match and uh sky went up sammy almost stopped him fans were deflated like ah i didn't get it but then scorpio shoved him off the ladder again went up got the belt place just went absolutely crazy i thought this was a home run except for the near-death experience and uh very very fun ending to a very very good addition of this uh, dynamite show, there's no way that dude's okay. He, he's not injured, but I don't know how he woke up this morning and and was okay. Just incredible recuperative powers. If that's the case, curious, you know, if Cody would have stayed, it's interesting to see exactly what they would have done because obviously, Sammy and. Ty absolutely fit that position that Cody was in, except they turned it on even more and they were getting, they've been getting outright booed even more. Cody at least had some support, but it, it's interesting after this, what do you do with Dan Lambert? I mean, dad, the, you know, dad Lambert from a couple weeks ago, Ethan Page being such a great heel, Scorpio Sky, he's the one who could actually benefit if they actually turned into a baby face unit, but fascinating uh how everything actually turned out and what the fortunes are now for sammy and ty there at the end but yeah i mean some really good stuff on this show you know a lot of people also got to see what you know we used to see with the horsemen and groups like that when they would come in wrestle a match and just dominate three guys i mean i thought it was a nice showcase there obviously with dax and cash that was fantastic serena deeb and Hikaru shida which yeah, I like Serena D. That's the one thing I like about, you know, people come out in the street fight. You know, people are probably expecting something wacky. And Hikaru Shida sort of kind of had some street fight gear on. But, you know, Serena D going out there as a pro, she always is in her gear for that street fight. I thought was a, a good touch. And the last thing, I guess, for me, the fireball uh, from Jericho, I thought it went really well. I'm wondering if they were nervous to do that in the ring in front of everybody. But I thought that's where... I, I thought that would have been kind of cool, you know, old school style guy turns around and that fireball's right in his face. But, you know, it did accomplish the goal. He did throw it and uh out in the back. So yeah, if it was more was gritty. It board. was more gritty in the back. Plus you could uh, you know, make sure if the thing didn't go off, you could do it yeah. again. You don't want Warrior and Hogan in the flash paper. That was a disaster. No. And that flash paper is expensive too. Hey uh it still is. I'm gonna let him do it, but he's gotta stay over there. I don't wanna I don't want him near me right now. Uh oh. Here's your uh, here's a rampage non spoiler lineup for this coming Friday. Owen Hart Foundation Cup qualifier: Darby Allen versus Swerve Strickland, Hook versus Danhausen, Jade Cargill and the Baddies, Red Velvet and Kira Hogan versus Willow Nightingale, Trisha Dora and Sky Blue, Keith Lee versus Colton Gunn, 
Road TV Championship Samoa Joe C versus Trent Beretta. Fowler is a little slow today. I don't know what's going on. Probably knows he's in trouble. Back in a moment, Observer Live. So during the break, old Fauntleroy begged me, begged me to let him say one more thing. He claims he's got a correction, and so I agree to let him do it, much to my dismay, but here we go. I apologize to the Twitch homies and listeners, and especially to the people listening free on YouTube because they're the best. Hook and Dan Housen are actually having a face-to-face -face confrontation. Not a match, as I indicated. Sorry, everybody. Sorry, everybody. Not gonna uh, to apologize for calling it the Row TV title or whatever the hell they called it. Dude, he's got a lot of problems. Hey, for those people who can't read, by the way, maybe you should start reading. This would be a good place to start. Blood and Fire, the new book by Brian Solomon about the life and times of the mysterious Sheik, the original Sheik, who still to this day has got a lot more kayfabe wrapped around him and hidden things wrapped around him. And he goes and undoes all those things. And a guy who was kept the business so close to his vest, even his closest friends didn't know a lot about him. There you go. Great book. Who's playing the guitar over there? That was a, a ting the uh, Red Bull can here. I'm going to do something stronger than this when this show's over, too. I can tell you that. We're out of time, everybody. we got to wrap it up. Lots of stuff coming up this weekend. Yes, stardom is this weekend. We'll be reviewing the uh, semifinals and finals of the Cinderella Tournament on the filthy Tom Lawler Show coming up on Monday, plus New Japan Strong and more. Only for subscribers. WrestlingObserver.com. Video.f4wonline.com. Back later on tonight, Brian and Vinny talking AEW and NXT. We'll talk to you then at Wrestling Observer Live.